Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Lots of love and many blessings your way. You guys, we have a little bit to talk about this morning, and I don't want to, to ramble on. I can't stand that. I thought the unicorns would be fitting considering how miserable Harry is, and it's so obvious. So, <laughs> let's get on with it. You guys, according to the Royal Insider, Harry's under a lot of pressure. Megan's putting some major pressure on him in so many different directions. They said that he's up against some, some pretty heavy uh, decisions. I don't know what they um, entail right now, but the second I found out, I'll definitely let you know. But listen to what happened. When they came through that corridor, nobody wanted to speak to Megan. Not a single person in that group. You can clearly see everybody's expression in her direction on their face. And the queen gallops off in her uh, car. Megan thought she was going to go in behind her, right? She didn't know uh, that she was supposed to interact with the commoners that were standing there and waiting. Her being there last year, of course she knows what she's supposed to do. Surely she didn't forget. Anyway, so she's front and center. She's trying to get everybody's attention. Like I said, Kate went off to, to interact with the commoners. William's having a conversation with the priest. Well, she can't get even Harry's attention. He's trying to interact with the commoners from a distance. Remember, she's clung on to him like a piece of Velcro, like a dingleberry. That's what she is. She's a, a, a dingleberry with a pulse. And so, finally, she, she tries to interrupt the conversation that William and the priest are having. They ignore her like four times. William takes off to join Kate. He totally looks over her and it starts talking to Harry. How embarrassing. She interjects her, herself into their conversation and continuously thanks him for whatever she's thanking him for. And then as the queen pulls off, she does this curtsy business. It was sickening. Matter of fact, she curtsied prior to Kate coming back and giving a curtsy. Like she's trying to be top dog here. It's ridiculous. Well, get what I'm about to tell you. Like I said, Kate and William, meanwhile, are back over here at the commoners. They're interacting. She's sitting there. Harry finally breaks free. He's talking to his uncle. And then he sees that he needs to go over there and interact. He was waiting to, to get her attention to come back over. And she's still trying to to give a, a, a show to the cameras. So he gets her and he ushers her over to the people. They're giving her flowers and all this stuff, you know, uh, talking to her. This young girl tries to give her a hug. She reluctantly hugs this girl. When she's doing it, she's white knuckling the entire ordeal. I was so embarrassed for this young girl. You could totally see the veins bulging on Megan's hand and she kept her fist clenched not to give this girl a hug back. I was so embarrassed for this young girl. Megan has forgotten exactly who she is and where she came from. She's an absolute vile creature. During their walk to the church, you can clearly see that they're talking to each other through, through like gritted teeth. They don't want anything to do with one another. But the, the royal family's PR people are really working overtime. Saying, oh, the Fab Four are back together. Everybody's happy. That's BS, you guys. You can see it. Man, pictures speak a thousand words. I don't even have to talk about this. Just look at the pictures. They, they speak for themselves. And then, of course, she's in her Morticia wear with her feathered hat. And, you know... Honestly, I think she wore the stupid feathers to signify her coat of arms because, after all, she is the silly songbird with those those legs. Oh, my gosh. She's just, ugh, gag me. And, of course, the Christmas message being unity and peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Here at Brexit time. Then you have Samantha. She came out and she posted a couple of tweets, which I thought were fantastic. She said, Dear Meg, this is not meant to be formal. The holidays are a time for family and are sentimental. As you know, Dad has been trying to contact you. He's very hurt because you're avoiding him. 
Life is short and you know dad's wonderful. Please give him joy in the last years by showing that you love him. The time is now. Please think about this, your sister Samantha. Then she posted another tweet and it said, I've never seen anyone so rude and hurtful and heartless and absent of a soul in my life. Shame on you uh, for, for what you've done to our father. No PR machine can fix this. I retract a Merry Christmas. You don't deserve it. How dare you walk into a church? I totally agree with Samantha, you guys. Absolutely every step of the way. Now let's talk about the royal PR machine she's, she's referring to. This thing is on standby 24-7. The second those tweets came out, the, the PR machine went into full-on overdrive, you guys. Put it in turbo. They came out trying to make Samantha look like an ass. They uh, were talking about how stupid she was, dragging her sister and through the mud publicly. Her dad, uh, you know, he just dropped a few gifts off at, at the uh, border where the tent city was set up. He was trying to, to be a helpful and humanitarian, a real humanitarian, by passing out gifts. And that's another video for another day. He was trying to do his due diligence, you know, at Christmas time. And they made him look like some oversized uh, slob you know, looking for a handout. I am so tired of these people putting a spin on it to suit them and their image when God knows that the monarchy should be overthrown and they should be out with the rest of the commoners. Who are they? You know, if nobody else knows, Megan, it should be the two people that raised her, her dad and Samantha. So here's the, the, the big deal of the story for Christmas. Okay, so Megan kept putting pressure on Harry to get her a, a gift, a real special piece of jewelry. Keep in mind, Megan owns $700,000 worth of jewels since joining this family legally. Do you know that her engagement ring from Prince Harry was made by a brooch that belonged to Princess Diana and it's valued at over $350,000? She wears $80,000 earrings, a uh, $300,000 bracelet, both from Cartier. It's not right, you guys, and she's calling herself a humanitarian. Give me a break. Okay, so Harry and the entire royal family are at odds. So let me tell you why. Okay, for Christmas, Megan had designed this ring. It was like an anniversary band, um, and it had three stones on it, right? And it was to indicate him, her, and then the baby to come. All right, so him and her stones were 2.5 carat diamonds. The baby stone was a, a carat and a half of a diamond. So he took this design that she had come up with to the, the royal jeweler. And he said to her, or he said to Harry, you know, we can't make this. This kind of goes against tradition. You know, I have to, to go through your grandmother. And Harry said, why? I don't understand. First of all, side note, why can't Harry go and find a different jeweler if he really wants to please Megan? Because he doesn't. He's being pushed against the wall, and he's so tired of it, and this just, just this absolutely confirms everything that these people are saying about his mental state. It's completely fragile. He can't take much more of this. Anyhow, so the jeweler scolded Harry. He said, you can't request a sentimental gift that went completely against tradition. All right, so he went to uh, his dad, and he said, look, you know, I don't understand why I can't get this, you know, created for her. She designed it. This is what she wanted for Christmas. And Charles said, well, you'll have to talk to, you, to your grandmother. So he goes to the queen. The queen gives him absolute grief over it. He, and she said, look, Harry, you need to stop giving in to your wife's most common wants, needs, and demands. She also informed Harry that she will no longer tolerate so much. When Harry explained to Megan he could not get that piece of jewelry made, do you know that she threw a fit and denied a gift from him for Christmas? What a brat! Who does she think she is? Okay, so Prince Andrew let something slip recently in a podcast. He said, and this was the initial podcast, you guys, he made it number one very clear that she's done nothing but disrespect this family from day one. 
He does not approve of Megan. Completely opposes her. But when he was asked about her due date, he initially said March, towards the end of March. Then he changed it to early April. Then he changed it in the same breath that babies come when they want to come. We can't control anything. You guys, something sinister is going on. I'm telling you right now, it looks very suspicious to me. The whole shebang looks very strange. The queen has had her feel. She's not putting up with it anymore. In fact, she's putting Megan in some sort of etiquette classes. They're to start up at the beginning of the new year. She was told several times to slow down. She will not even let what's-his-face. She's such a clinger. She's such a Klingon that she won't even allow him to go to Boxing Day without her. She is now insisting on going. And it goes against her entire belief system, right? That's another video. PETA is pissed. I want to tell you guys what's going on with PETA in the upcoming video. I also want to talk about where Camilla's been. And she did not have a heavy cold, quote unquote. <laughs> That's crazy. I hope y'all had a wonderful time with your family and your loved ones during this holiday season. I know that I did. Um, but I'm so thankful they're over. <laughs> I am so thankful the holidays are over. Well, we have New Year's Eve and then it's over, officially done. I wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that have, uh, has subscribed to my, my channel. You know, when I started this channel, I never dreamed I'd, I would make it to 2,000 subscribers, much less 22,000. And I'm telling you, I'm full of gratitude. You've humbled me. My heart swells with love. I appreciate each and every one of you for going on this journey with me. I know that sounds corny, but it's true. And if you knew the magnitude of blessing that you've been to me in my life, that's another video. Just know that... You know, I look forward to you. I really do. Everybody that I talk with under at, under my videos, I have some very loyal viewers and friends that I, I speak with almost always under my videos. I appreciate you guys so much. I'll make a video about it one day. I just want you to know you've blessed me. You, you've literally blessed my life. And I just can't thank you enough. And I'm extremely humbled. You guys, I've got nothing but love for each one of you, and I hope God blesses you like you've blessed me. Um, but anyway, I'm corny, and I just would go off for hours, and I don't want to tie up any more of your time. I thank you so much for listening and for watching. And, um, yeah, I'll see you real soon, and we'll talk real fast. You guys stay safe and be blessed.